Good evening, this is John Lucas again. I'm going to try to do a little short video on turning coves. Now, as many of you know, almost everything in wood turning is either a bead, this is an elongated bead, this is a rounded bead, or coves. This is a bead with a cove cut in the middle of it. This is part of a lamp that I was working on. Coves can be very gradual, such as this cove followed by a bead that Nick Cook cuts in his rattles. They can be partially cove, such as this biscuit cutter that my friend Randy does. There are, of course, lots of coves and beads in Christmas ornaments of all different shapes. So we're going to try and turn a cove now, and I'll show you how to do it. Now, when turning a cove, this is the way the grain runs in my spindle, and we always want to turn downhill on the grain so that we're following the grain like this. This means that each little line is supported as we cut it. If I cut back this direction, I can break off the corner, and it's going to leave a very ragged edge. This is a typical cove. We always cut from the high point to the low point. High point to low point. Okay, one way to do a bead is first off to mark it. Then you take a parting tool and you cut down to the depth that you need for your cove. So we're going to make one about the same as that one over there. When I first learned to do it, it was using a scraper. Now, again, with a scraper, you always use the handle higher than the cutting edge. And you always go from the high point to the low point. So we'll go from high to low, high to low. I have to alternate sides because if I catch the right-hand side with this, I could get a catch. So I want to start from there and go down to the bottom. Start on this side, go down to the bottom. Now we're just trying to get rid of those little marks right at the very bottom from the parting tool. Now you have to be very gentle on these cuts. Don't be aggressive. It's be very easy. The difficulty of doing this with a scraper is it's a little bit hard to control the shape. And usually it doesn't leave as clean a finish. There's a little bit of tear out. This was pretty clean. This was freshly sharpened with a nice burr. And it's pretty clean looking. And one of the reasons I don't use a scraper to cut coves is if you're cutting several side by side and you want very, very crisp corners, it's difficult to do this with a scraper because you'll tear these corners up. They'll chip. But with a spindle gouge, I can get a corner that will almost cut you. As you can see, that's, that's very sharp. It's hard to do that with a scraper. I, I tried to do that with a scraper, and you can see how my edges are just torn to pieces. But we'll just use a spindle gouge. Now you can see I have a nice clean edge. The biggest problem, well, one of the biggest problems of using a scraper is that I have to have a cove bigger than my scraper. Now I could always go to a very small scraper and get a smaller cove and that does work also. But it requires a, obviously a different tool for each one. It can also be difficult to get a very steep sided shape. I have to change tools or change scrapers to do that. With a spindle gouge I would do the same thing. Use my parting tool. Cut down to the depth I want my bead cove. And then I start from the other side. Now, you have to think of this like scooping out ice cream. See how I'm moving the tool? You don't just, you could stick it in there, but this is using it like a scraper if I stick it straight in. What I want to do is I want to be rubbing the bevel. So I'm rubbing the bevel, I turn the tool with the flute down. 
and I make this scooping action. So we'll go over here and we'll make it that way. Now what I do is as I start the cut, I put the flute pointing toward the left, start the cut very gently. I have to establish a little shoulder like that for the tool to rest on. And I have to have the flute pointing in the direction I want to go. So if this needs to be a very deep cove, I get the cut started. Now the flute's on there, so it's not going to go anywhere. Now I push straight in, and I scoop it out in the direction I want to go. Now at the same time, you have to lower the, or raise the handle. What I'm trying to do is stop cutting at the bottom. See how the bevel is riding right now, but I'm not cutting? That's because I lowered the handle. I said raised. Scoop it down. See, we're just scooping ice cream here. Now I get the bevel pointing exactly where I want to go. I make a very light cut till I get the shoulder started. Then I push it in. And as I get toward the bottom, I rotate it flat. Being careful not to hit that other side. If this hits that side over there, I can get a catch. Start the tool cutting. Now again, it's very important to get the bevel going where you want it to go and make a very light cut. If you make a hard cut, it'll kick it out hard if it's not pointing in the right direction. So make a light cut. We get a shoulder started. Push it in. I watch the back side. I don't watch where I'm cutting. I watch the shape of the cove. As always, this is a little difficult to do when you're reaching with your legs around a tripod. <laughs> but that's the way a cove would be cut. And it's a very clean cut, very little tear out. It can easily be sanded. Again, I have to match the bevel to the direction I'm cutting. If I want a steep-sided cove, the tool may have to be way around here. If I want a shallow cove, the tool can be back here. So we'll turn this one into more of a shallow bead by simply aiming the bevel in a different direction. Again, you have to start it. If I start it aggressively and I don't have the angle right, it wants to run backwards like that. So I'm going to start it very gently, get my shoulder started, push it in. And just scoop my ice cream. Now what you can't see on the camera is I'm doing these movements with my body. So when I get right here, I've got the handle down. I can simply raise my body up very slightly. And right about there it starts to cut. And that's how you control the depth and the shape of the cove. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little trick that really helped me when I was cutting coves early on. First of all, we'll cut that cove where I want it. I can take away some waste. Make a little stair step. <laughs> now usually when you're trying to start a cove and you don't get this bevel exactly on the right angle. Remember I said it was important to have a shoulder for the tool against? For example, there's a shoulder. So rubbing against that shoulder, I'm not going to get a kickback. So what I do is I take the parting tool and I create a slight shoulder right where my lines are. Just real slight. Now I have a shoulder to start on so I can put my bevel against that, push the tool in, it won't get a kickback. See, I'm on that shoulder. And I've already wasted away a lot of my material, so it takes very little time to go shape the cove. Now another alternative, if you're concerned about having a really, really clean finish, is to start the cove with your skew. I've started my shoulder now, 
and that's a very clean, very crisp shoulder because it was started with the skew. And now again, I can put my tool and my spindle gouge in there, make my cut, go to this side, put my gouge in there, I make one more because I didn't quite get that out of the way. There we go. Okay, I've got one last trick for you experts out there. Let's suppose that you want to cut a cove that's very deep and very narrow. That's pretty deep and that's pretty narrow. Obviously, I can't do that with my spindle gouge. I couldn't even do that with my detail gouge because it's too narrow. If I try using a very, very narrow detail gouge, it would chatter too much. So I use the toe of the skew. Let's get started. Now what I do is I get to the bottom, I'm simply arcing the tool across. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very effectively, but as I go across the bottom, I'm turning the tool this way, but I have to be very, very careful not to touch this part of the skew on this part of the lip. So we'll go to both sides. <laughs> kind of visualizing the shape as you go. And what I'm doing really is the, the toe of the skew is almost kind of acting like a scraper. And there we go, with a little bit of work, a little bit of sanding on the inside. And you have a very long, deep, narrow cove. Now, of course, coves don't have to be equal on both sides. You can have a very steep side followed by a very long side. This is very similar to a column that Frank Lloyd Wright used in his architectural work. So feel free to play with your coves any way you want.